Does the name Steve Babaiko ring a bell? Of course it does. It is one of the first names that comes to mind at the mention of advertising in Nigeria. He is one of, if not the first advertising professional that didn't forget to brand himself even as he brands his clients. His list of creative works speak for him, but his personal brand speaks even louder. Little wonder he is the first and only Nigerian named in Adweek's 2019 list fascinating people in advertising, media and culture. And why for three years running, he has served on the grand jury of the New York Advertising Festival as well as being a keynote speaker at the 2018 International Advertising Association Conference. Steve Babaiko has put in over 25 years of his life into the advertising business and has a long list of awards and achievements, including being the founder and CEO of one of Nigeria's foremost advertising agency, Extreme Ideas. And now he has taken up the responsibility of leading the entire Nigerian advertising industry as well. What will the future look like for ad agencies and creatives in Nigeria? Find out from the man of the moment, the new president of the Association of Advertising Agencies of Nigeria, AAAN, Steve Babaiko, exclusively on Live with Linda. Okay, so <laughs> today we're going to be speaking with, um, hi, oh my gosh, finally, I'm so sorry. It's been crazy. I've been going through hell here because of I the network and all. I, I think How are you? Switch to glow, though, if you are not, if you are not on glow network. <laughs> okay. Uh, then oh, maybe oh, I you know what? It's... This is glow. Don't stop up your How about that? <laughs> 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 it's a lie. I have credit. <laughs> I have credit. So please help no, 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 me tell Glow that they me, are frustrating me. me. I've oh been my gosh! From meetings to meetings all day, from the IA conference to the one uh, AGM, and I've had a pleasant okay. experience, to be honest. Yeah. Oh really? What well, sometimes it's usually very nice, but then some days it's just crazy. Like today, I said it's not today that I want to interview Steve, but I could. Have apologies to our, like, apologies to our. But thank God we are back on. Now. Yeah. <laughs> so come. So. As in, ah, okay. So let's let's get right to it. Thank you so much for joining us, and congratulations thank you very once much. again. Um, you president of Triple A. <laughs> yeah, so um, I was telling some of my my friends, I said, you know, if it was if it were some other people, if it was some other person that is a president, it's a it's normal thing, you know, it's just a role. You know, they can do their best and it's fine. But not you, <laughs> not Steve Babaiko. Yes, because you are the popular Steve Babaiko, so we have a lot of eyes on you. We have a lot of hopes on you. People are hoping. <laughs> you are going to change Thanks. the game, you know? And we're talking about people not just from the advertising industry. <laughs> we have people from the entertainment industry as well looking up to you. So, how have you been holding no on? Pressure. I hope Thank the pressure you. is you not too much. It a lot easier by piling on all of those <laughs> high, high milestones and, <laughs> and high expectations. So, I'm, I'm, if, I'm, if you see me sweating, it's not from any pressure at all. I'm actually quite calm. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. but I mean the pleasure is there. The pleasure is there. No, oh great! The pleasure is there. I mean, it's uh, you know, people expect so much, and I'm really, really, I, I have, I have so much confidence in my team. I have a yeah. very strong board. I have a very strong team. My vice president Jenkins Alumana. Okay. I have uh, yeah. Mr. Nari Adisas, our next official Tunji Olubudi. I have uh, Tokwa Jemiribe. You know, Tola. From uh, Tola will be from uh, Center Spread. So I have. Okay. That made the difference, yeah. Great. I'm happy to hear that. Okay, so for, for the sake of people who don't know, we know we have sure. a lot of fresh people entering the industry every day. So please, let's start with you clarifying what the role of AAAN is. Well, uh, so the AAAN was founded in 1973 by uh, heavyweight it's, uh, visionary people uh, who were in the advertising 
Industries at that time. I think it was founded around June 1973, even though the plan to like birth the association had been on since around 19, I think maybe 1970 or 1972. But yeah. it finally came to fruition in 1973. Mm-hmm. And the role, the role of it is just to manage okay. the professionalism of, to coordinate the professionalism of advertising across uh, and, to, uh, and to continue to develop the industry in terms of people, processes, you know, and to also forge that relationship between all of the, all of the sectoral groups. Okay. You know, advertising does not operate by itself. You work with clients, you work with uh, uh, bodies like one, you know, and as new bodies continue to emerge, like Mepan, like Bon, you know, and, and, and you even work with Apcon as well, which is our regulator, uh, you know, so uh, it's just to form that very healthy bridge across all of these sectoral groups. That's, it, that's their major role. Okay, so Apcon actually regulates that's, that's AAA, so, yeah, by law, right? You know. Apcon actually does not no, does not just regulate okay. people. Apcon regulates all right, good. So, advertising uh, advertising practice according to the code in all of its ramifications. So it's good to clear that it just it's not just about triple M but about advertising practices. Okay. <laughs> okay, great, great. Um, so from your explanation, it's um, it's clear, it's pretty clear that Triple A N, which is the Association of Advertising Agencies yeah. in Nigeria, they already have set rules Absolutely. and guidelines, you know, as to how to standardize the industry, regulate pitches and every other thing. But I would lie to you, a lot of people, and I know myself inclusive, have not really felt the presence of Triple A N in the past. So it's like some of these rules and guidelines have not been no, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that true? And if that is true, how is that? Exactly that <laughs> okay, go ahead. Then has I mean, if you check the the history of this association, they've taken on clients, they've taken on fights to clients to some in some instances where uh-huh. clients actually will have to do the right thing, e.g., on the issue of pitches. But you see, the thing is that uh, the police. Okay. And uh, and prevention of crime in society. If you do not report to the police that a crime has been committed, they, they, mm-hmm. they, like they say on the streets of Wari Province, this might not be spirit. So, so how would the police know? So if if Triple A is supposed to regulate some of these things, <laughs> somebody needs to bring a case forward to Triple A and say, uh, Triple A, yeah. can you please uh, help us inter- okay. intervene in this situation that we have on our hands? between us or, or, and another agency or between mm. us and a client or mm. even between us and the regula- regulator as a matter of fact and if this happens mm. I, I can assure you you feel more the presence of triple n than that you've ever done yeah okay okay but is there a reason why people are not reporting to triple a n that's the thing because what's the first thing that comes to mind when an agency has a problem most of the time, they don't think, oh, let me go to AAA. Well, They're thinking, how do I solve the, this problem by myself? So there's definitely a gap yes. there. So I a gap somewhere. And you see, the, the, there's this proverb, physician heal thyself. Mm. As, as, as agencies, we are always eager to like want to work for the client, develop the clients. We are so buried in that process that sometimes, out of the selflessness mm. of our hearts as, mm. uh, as an industry, we forget to even attend to ourselves. So, I mean, those are the kind of gaps that we're hoping with this administration to close, and which, is, which means yeah. that between the AAA secretariat and the agencies, there will be much more closer net relationship that will help us detect and pick up some of these issues and also on behalf of those agencies, take them up and, and see if we can find solutions to them. Okay. Um, in your campaign manifesto, I Thank saw you. the website you did and everything pretty nice. You did say that um, the bedrock, <laughs> yeah, the bedrock of your campaign is actually um, pulling Absolutely. agencies yeah. together. You're trying to unite yeah. all the agencies and making sure that we all work together and all of that. So you know, like we do in um, advertising, if there is a problem, is to solve a problem, you don't have to just know what to identify the problem. You also have to know the cause of the problem so that you can be able to uproot it. You know. So now you have obviously identified a problem, all right, with your campaign. You yeah. said, you know, there is division. Obviously, there's division in the in the industry. 
and I want to know why do you think that there is division in the industry and what steps are you going to take to be able to um, eradicate whatever challenges uh, well, is causing you. that and then achieve you know, the unification goal? I tell people, especially young people you know, uh, wanting to come into the industry, advertising is a combat sport. It's a combat sport. Mm. It's a combat profession. Okay. There's no way. It's a cutthroat competition in which hopefully no truth is caught because the competition is high. So because of, and where where you find competition, yeah. you sort of find a bit of rivalry Very sometimes. High. Even in your family, you see a family yeah. of six, seven children, they're growing up. The first born is at loggerhead with the <laughs> last born, who is probably more favored or who is more like, so it, there, even in a family, there will be those kind of rivalry. You find those sibling rivalry. But I think what we are saying is let's know when to compete and when mm. to cooperate because for me what i believe strongly that cooperation is the new competition in this shared economy that we found ourselves agencies must just know when to we will have to compete i mean i can tell you right now mm -hmm. one of the things that may not be said out there in the public the race is on for which agency is going to bring win the first can for nigeria so i mean we don't talk about it in the industry but it doesn't mean people are not preparing their arsenal their creatives to go submit it. That's actually very good. That's, that's a healthy so competition. You see, and in those competitions, people knock head, accounts move from one agency <laughs> to another. So those are the things. But once you find a leadership that is demonstrating that, it's not just mm. about me. Now, I, you won't see me talking these days. Now, I really don't want to talk much about extreme. Extreme is there. The people who know what to do, they run their business. But generally, most of the time, you see me pushing for this unification of agenda yeah. uh, amongst agencies and just trying to bring foster that unity that will take us to that next level that we should be heading towards. Okay, so the, the division, Absolutely. like you said, is nothing except yeah, for you're right. the competition That's it. for that, accounts. Nothing, because you know the fact no, that... No <laughs> that anyway. It's just people are competing and then we, 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 <laughs> we're just trying to to show the best that we have, you know. <laughs> okay, so um, in your campaign manifesto, you also mentioned that you are going to be very big on women empowerment. As a woman, I was very <laughs> excited. Yay, you're going to be big on women empowerment. But I was also curious. Yeah. So please, can you tell me, <laughs> Steve, why are you very, very interested what, in first and foremost, empowering I mean, women? may not have uh been challenged or we, we may not have posted any picture on instagram yesterday black and white picture saying uh linda's challenged me so i'm posting but secretly I've, <laughs> I've always been a big supporter of women because i just i understand what it is when a set of people who people just for some reason for all the cultural reason and all the horrible old-fashioned reasons in the world just don't get caught the slack that they truly deserve. I know. Mm -hmm. I look at it. Just take a cursory look at all of the the statistics on all of the countries that has that have the lowest uh, COVID nineteen rates uh, in the world. They are all not for nothing that that, that happened. That is just so women have mm. so much to contribute. If they, yeah. it's not even about giving them chances yeah. just to get out of the way so that they do what they need to do. So for me, I just thought that that is one part of our group and our industry that we have not tapped well enough. Yes, we've had about two women presidents in the past, Mrs. Bola Thomas and Mrs. Bomioke. And that's about it. And if you look at the mm -hmm. list of all of the presidents that have come before me, mm -hmm. just only two women. Again, if you look at all of the agencies in this country, how many of them are owned by women? You can count it on one finger and still have fingers left. So I just feel that there is a repository mm. of knowledge sitting down somewhere. Mm. All we just need to go there and invite them to come in and contribute. And that's what we're doing mm. uh, right now with uh, our ESCO. Okay, so um, that's good. That's what you're planning to do for Triple AN. But is there any way Triple AN is going to encourage women in advertising? Not that I know of. I don't even know if women are being marginalized in, you know, advertising per se. Because you know, I was speaking to I was speaking to um, the owner of an agency this morning, and what he told me was, you know, you know, in those days when I go for pitches, all you see are men, 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 men. But nowadays, yeah. you walk into a pitch and the room is filled with women. 
women are taking over marketing and branding and all of that. So um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm sure there might still be a little bit of craziness there and there where women are being, you know, trapped and not being given the right, the opportunity to achieve their full potential. But I, I'd like to think that it's quite de it's changing and it's different. And um, hopefully adver in advertising, it's better than in other industries. But is there any other thing you plan to do like what? for women in advertising in general? In, yeah. in general, apart from, you know, putting yeah. them in... Well, it's position. good that you mentioned it because <laughs> we actually do have uh, another subgroup under the AAA called Women in Advertising. So it's, uh, the chairman is uh, Topo Jemri with the, the CEO of uh, oh, great. DKK. Uh, and... Uh, uh, between me and my vice president, we were the only male okay. members <laughs> of that association in the in the in the past uh, in the just immediate past uh, executive. So we we supported, we did everything we can. And as I speak to you, I'm sure they have their plans laid out for 2020, COVID-19 or not. Uh, they have, uh, and so okay. I will continue in, in my capacity okay. as the president of the association now to continue to support them and push. Because, you see, if you look at what happens in advertising, it's not that women are marginalized. Yeah. It's just that at the entry level, you find lots of women. But once you start to climb to a senior level, they start to drop off. And uh, those gaps yeah. are what we are... Exactly. Okay. Okay, okay. I get it. All right. So, guys, if you're watching and you have any questions for Mr. Steve, please leave your questions in the question tab below and we will get to them okay don't write it on the screen just leave it in the question tab on your screen all right so moving on now see there are a lot of people in this industry that are new we have new crops of people coming in every day you know because they think advertising is a gold mine um so we have not just creatives who are freelance owners we also have business owners we have people I get calls every day of people saying, please, I want to start an agency. What do I need? Everybody everybody wants to start an No, seriously. Everybody wants to start an agency. So they come in every day, right? So um, I'm sure like some of these people still don't understand, you know, what is required of them to be able to set up a proper agency. Now that you are um, the president, if you are, by God's grace, able to achieve the standardization of the industry, how will this affect you know, these individuals that are just coming up every day and opening shop, even only, some of them are only on Instagram, they're opening shop on Instagram. So how would you, well, I, <laughs> how the standardization of the industry like affect them? Actually coming into this industry just because of money, it's better just go and start a farm somewhere. You make money faster than if you start an ad agency. <laughs> and that's a fact. And sometimes things get so hectic that I, I tell myself, I wish I had known yeah. what, I, if I had knew, if I knew what I know now, I probably would just have just sat and be a creative director in the agency I used to work yeah. and just be collecting my salary. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but, yeah, but right. Be told, yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> if, if it, it's my vision to, to embrace as many people as possible, especially those guys on the show. There are lots of talents there. But honestly, as much, even me, yeah. I get a foot all the time, especially these days. Oh, I want to start an agency. I'm like, well, that's why we have our membership committee. Do we have a certain listed criteria that we must, inv we must visit okay. your space? You, there are certain things we are looking for so that we will not... The, the, the look mm -hmm. like the entry barrier now, we want to raise it to the normal standard where it is so that as much as we want more people to join us, we just want more professionals to join us. For instance, are you AppCon registered? Are you AppCon certified? Mm -hmm. Do you have any experience? Mm -hmm. You can't just wake up. I cannot just walk away and set up a hospital and say, mm. I want to start operating on people. I'm sure I will, they will end up in jail. It is, advertising is a profession. So as much as we want to encourage everybody to join us, we just mm. want you to get the requisite experience and gather the experience team and meet the basic standards we've drawn up. You are welcome to come to the Secretariat. It's on, uh, in Alaus at the address, so they will put you through some of the requirements that 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 is needed and then you you can begin to process your membership and yeah we'll be fair to everybody but just know that we want you to be qualified and we want you to be professional okay so uh, okay yeah so because i i, I hear what you say about 
um, medicine and being opening on an hospital and all of that. But you know, we why, 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 is it, why is it not? Why is it not? Know? Why is it not? There are expensive? people who haven't gone to school. Yeah, yeah. No, in terms of professionalism, it is. But there are people who haven't been to advertising school who can, for example, do a I better job about than that some of us. Even directors that are that in the agency. making skits on uh, right? on Instagram. Mm -hmm. For me, people like Taoma, people like Crab. <laughs> That does not mean that they can even come to an, and they are very creative, yeah. ex extremely creative. Yeah. But that does not mean that they will come in as a as a copywriter or a creative director yeah. and succeed yeah. on the one. There are still certain honing of craft that will help you transform of course. from just being a naturally yeah. creative person to a professionally trained advertising practitioner, and that and that is what we are about, you know. Oh, okay, so but I think some I don't know you might have to also visit some of the criteria too because you know we are in a digital age now and a lot of these people some of them I'm pretty sure they don't even have an office and some of their clients don't yeah. need to come to their office. You get what I mean? Everything is done online. They do their design because some of them are just not even a full fledged mm -hmm. advertising agency. They're just a design agency, for example. All they do is flyers, artworks, and the rest. so you don't even need to see. <laughs> anybody for them to get the work done. So I think the process of, you know, getting them into the industry has to be, it has to, I don't know, maybe making it a bit, a bit more easier, okay. you know. For example, can they do it online? Well, we will we'll see. We're, we're trying you know, like, to things like that. If we go to our website, <laughs> because, I'm sure we can actually overlay some of these things you're about on the website to make it more interactive. You know, we can actually lay... Okay. I think we have plans to to introduce like a, uh -huh. a, a a chat bot now that you can chat with and you can in real time begin to ask questions as to how what you need to do and and those things we will we'll, we'll definitely uh, see them through uh, in the next coming months and then it will be a lot easier for people to converse uh, and and discuss what they really need to bring to the table. Yeah, so I'm really happy about that because, like I said, everybody's worried about it. Everybody is a professional. Everybody is an advert, uh, advertiser. You know, it's crazy. The, the industry really yeah. needs to be more professional, and we need to know who is play, who is a which, player. Which is why we need player. the Afcon. Which is why the government needs to reconstitute the Afcon board. You see, all of the things we're complaining about, they are already in the Afcon code. All of the standards that are required. Mm -hmm. In fact, under the code, mm -hmm. you can. And go to jail for practicing advertising illegally if you are not fully registered. You see, that's how it's a profession. Like I did tell you, I know it's in the code. You see, you know what I mean. Afcon has the right to even come yeah. and visit agencies <laughs> if your members are not registered. Yeah. Afcon has the right to bring police and arrest those people. You know what I'm saying? So this this is not a joke. We know that when people see some of us, because yeah. I have one yeah. leg in entertainment, people think, oh, it's easy. I've had I have 25 years working experience under my belt and the same thing with all of the <laughs> that stuff and all the guys that young people look up to i mean the thing is we need people who will be able to take this profession seriously we need we need more people but we just don't want fly by night people who to come and even create more disrepute for our industry we want people who are bringing really good value and experience that's what we want great um, like I said, um, it's just all about um, flexibility, that's all, uh, with the process because, you know, like before, before you can even have a, a shop to sell anything, you must have a physical place where people sure. go in and buy, but now people yeah. sell, buy and yeah. sell online, you don't interact with customers, you don't do anything, right, and that's because it's easy to set up shop online and manage your stuff, so I think, like you said, I know you have it in the world, so I think it should be taken you know, seriously, sure. make it a little bit more flexible, street, but at least flexible and then uh, um, more accessible. Yeah. All right. So, but as people are coming into the industry, Steve, a lot of people are still trying to pull out because the competition is crazy. That's number one. Number two, a lot of people are scared that their source of livelihood yeah. is going into things. Yes. They are scared that advertising is, you know, getting to be old school uh, an old school thing so is there any plan um that you have as president of triple a n to ensure that advertising business we, we definitely have plans and that is why we need to work more on the upcon code and just we need to really 
make the government see that they are doing more harm to this great industry for every passing day when the APCOM board is not constituted. And like I always mm -hmm. tell people, to have an advertising industry without APCON mm -hmm. board being the, uh, the, the council bid in place, it's like flying an aeroplane without the control tower working. How are, they go how are planes going to take off? How are they going to land? So no wonder you are seeing people getting frustrated. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the arrowhead of this uh, industry yeah. is the APCON council that will help address some of those issues that are already embedded in the code. And it is in all of this confusion that you see the government now goes mm -hmm. and, 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 mm -hmm. and buries uh, code about advertising regulation inside the NBC code. Who, who is the, to, uh, for me as an advertising, as the president of the AAA, and I'm asking who is NBC? Yeah. I don't know the NBC. The, my, my regulator is APCON. So why are you putting the code that's regulating my industry into another body that mm. for me is an alien as yeah. far as I'm concerned? So you see, all of these things, the government has a hand in it. And if the government is really serious yeah. about providing employment and helping people keep their jobs, and helping industry stay afloat in this very trying period, this is the time mm. to, without further delay, institute the APCON Council. Mm. Okay, I hope they're hearing us. <laughs> yeah, and I know that apart from saying it online, you would still, you know, do some things behind the scenes to try and reach out to them and make sure that they see your point of view and get the council up and running because yeah the industry is dying and we really need to take you know serious steps into bringing it back to life um earlier you mentioned the skit guys yeah. the ones doing content you mentioned them earlier um somebody asked me this question before and i'm throwing it to you no um, at all at all i mean as a matter in, of fact industry i know that because of the have platforms it's not not about creating they also have developed platform that people really love. It's about the comedy, it's about the interesting storylines that they keep churning out day in, day out. So they have, I don't forget that advertising is just, the client, what clients yeah. are looking for is opportunities for eyeballs to see what the service or, or yeah. yeah. Okay, so they have those eyeballs. Some of them what are you sitting doing? on uh, yeah. 1 million, 2 million uh, followers on Instagram. So naturally, they are, they, we are clients to them. You see, because I know how many checks I sign for some of those for some of those mm. guys, or, or you know, I, because my clients wants to put their, <laughs> their content on those oh, platforms yeah. as well. So I really don't see them. I see them as partners. I see them. I see an advertising industry tomorrow where we will embrace them and even co-create stuff with them. Because at the end of the day, you know, the power of idea is not even so much about who owns the idea. For me, as a, as an advertising practitioner, I just want the brands that I support to yeah. win in this very crowded marketplace. So I don't care if you tell me the ideas will be, can be sourced from the bottom of the ocean. I'll put on my frog suit, frog suit and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going there with my team to go look for the ideas. So if we can partner with them, I'm definitely open to do all of that to embrace them and hope and help our clients to win. Yeah, but that's you, Steve. Right, mm -hmm. you're working with some of the big guys in the industry, the big, the big brands, and are there even more than twenty? Well, How many agencies do we have in Nigeria? Do you understand what I'm saying? In Lagos, at a loan set. Oh, okay. What I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is, now some of these big brands, they are able to have a structured agency carry out some of these things for them. So you can say now that these kids people are your partners because your aid, your brand trusts you to be able to, you know, coordinate the process and make sure everything comes out perfectly. But for the growing brands, which some of these small agencies are trying to attract, they don't need, they'll tell you you don't need an agency. They go straight to these kid guys. Some of them have in-house agencies, you know? So those are some of the challenges that is that making that's making a lot of people fear for their jobs because they just go straight to the production team. They already um, the last place I worked before I started my own thing, they employed me because they knew they know I worked in an advertising agency, right? So because yeah. they want to have their own team. So that's the challenge we are having. And I know that you know these things because there was a conference you 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 I attended. In fact, the first time I saw a video yeah, about the advertising absolutely. world going extinct, it was from you. You played the video that day, right? So yeah, so 
I need you to just say something to help alleviate their fears. Like, okay, will this industry really go you, down? You know, the only or thing that you will think that it's COVID forever or any thing. other pandemic that ever affects this, uh, uh, that ever affects the world, it is the power of imagination of mankind. That is what is going to outlive yeah. all of us. Okay, and and yeah. as long as as an agency, everything have yeah. a, a very good chunk of that power of imagination at your disposal, you shall survive. But let me tell you something. Let's be clear about something. The, mm. What we find, where we find ourselves as, as in the digitization of the world, yeah. democratization of ideas, is what is making, if you see, radio today, I, and I speak because mm. I, I, you know I have one leg in the music. If you wanted to break a new artist, if you don't go and sleep in the house of radio OAPs yeah. and sleep overnight and beg them yeah. to even just collect the CD, you are not, you, the artist mm -hmm. will never see the light of day. But today, Tunde had not, if he decides to dedicate 20 posts to a new artist, the artist may become a star overnight. So you see that the balance of power has shifted, right? <laughs> and that's what we're saying. Yeah. We're, yeah. The industry is beset by a lot of problems, technology, digital, digitalization, and democratization of everybody just feeling that, oh, I'm an ad agency now. But you see, those agencies still that still know what they are doing, mm. that will hire the right people, that will treat mm. their people well, that will be proactive and to bring good imagination and serve their clients mm -hmm. to the best of of their abilities will still will still survive and so instead of us looking at the challenge let's be looking at the opportunity and what we need to do to be in a very poor position as these changes happen around us i am very very glad steve that you, you mentioned the power of imagination because um before this interview i was going through your former in your last interview okay. with um yeah uh, the CEO of Noah's Act, Mr. Langley, and you said, because he asked a question about why Nigerians are not playing yeah. heavily in the, not even playing heavily, playing at all in the international awards thing, both locally and internationally there. And you said, and I quote, the industry, where is that? Yeah, the industry is beset with so Yeah, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah. You can hear me now. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, you got the quote, right? Great. So now, I, although I understand that, but creativity is about rising above the challenges to become, to create something great. Like you said, with the power of imagination. So would you retract no, that I, sentence I, 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 you I, I, made? It does, or that's they don't, they don't made? actually contradict each other at all. You know, <laughs> as, as, uh, as, a president, as a president of AAAN now, Okay. It is my Explain. job and my heavy responsibility to just identify where mm. the shoe pinch is for all of our members' agencies. That's why when I speak, spoke to Mr. Adisa, I was speaking as the guy who is now running the association. Mm -hmm. Of course, okay. I cannot close my eyes to the fact that, like you see, all the <laughs> fingers are not equal, right? The big agencies, you know them already, you know. And the, 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 I mean, mm -hmm. so the guys who is, who is smaller yeah. is, is fighting out of those problems that I say beset this industry. Meanwhile, the big guys are mm -hmm. still competing and winning. Noah's Ark has won lots of uh, competition, yeah. international award. Ditto for in insights. Mm -hmm. They've won so many. I'm sure they can't. They don't mm -hmm. know where to keep this, mm -hmm. keep it in their office right now. DDV has won. Um, extreme <laughs> ideas. We can't even count. And you find young agencies mm. like Up in the Sky have also won. I mean, so it means that some interactive, uh, so many young agencies have won, you know? So it means that this thing is not about big or mm. small agencies. It's about just, it's about who has the big ideas that can win. But having oh. said that, yeah. it, is, it does not mean we need to close our eyes to the problem mm. affecting our, our business and our industry and our agencies. So I, and, and to pretend Mm -hmm. It's just not mm -hmm. to be realistic to say, okay, look, you want all of us to win uh, big awards internationally, but you are going to enter those awards with Euro. And what is the exchange rate? What is the Naira exchange rate between Naira and Euro today? So those, those are the obvious challenges. Yeah. yeah. So a small agency yeah. of 10 people in Europe is earning Okay, I'm Euro. glad. And so if they say yeah. uh, for every award, it's about 150 Euro to 200 Euro. They are earning in Euro, so they, they, they pay in Euro. But a small agency in Nigeria is earning in Naira. They need to change times 500 
to enter an award. So while the small agency in Europe is able to enter 20 awards or 30 award <laughs> entries, the guy in Nigeria is struggling to make two, three entries. And the less you <laughs> enter, the less your chances of winning. That's how it works in this thing. So those are the practical parts. I'm very, very glad. Yes, I'm very, very glad that you have clarified because when I read it, it seems like you were saying, oh, there's an excuse for you no, not, not to come not up really. with award-winning jobs. You know, because entry for award is... Yeah, no, entry for award is different, right? So the fact that you cannot enter, everybody can understand. But I want to be able to see and say, oh my goodness, this agency did an yeah. amazing work. If it had been entered into cans, for example, it would have won. So I think, you know, the challenges should not stop anybody for, from coming out with award. No, no, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And I, and I think, That's what I think. Uh, you know why? Because, agencies because we uh, put up a fight. We put up a strong fight. If you see... If you see Lu uh, Luther's archive, yeah. you, there's no time you check out of the world. There's an ad from Nigeria that's been showcased. So, I mean, it means that we're not sleeping. I mean, it's, it, to, to, to go out there and fight with the best and win is difficult. Look at football. Nigeria is one of the greatest footballing nations in the world. Have we won the World Cup? No. It does not mean that the Nigerian footballers are not good. It means that, look, when you're competing yeah. with the best, yeah. it would, you have to beat the best to become the best. So, we will get there, we'll work our way in there. But just not to say, I, 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 I just try to not uh, flow with the tide uh -huh. when people start hitting Nigeria on the head and say, oh, we're not doing as well as we should be doing. Yes, the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. <laughs> There's definitely room for improvement. But I shout out to all our member agencies who are fighting to fly Nigerian flag yeah. all the time. And by the way, when footballers go and play their football and they win laurels for this country, of course, the president and the vice president is quick to go and stand and shake hands with them and give them houses. When we go and win all of these awards for Nigeria, <laughs> we don't see anybody. So yeah. I think the government needs to pay more attention to our industry than they used yeah. to in the past. Um, <laughs> I wanted to make one statement, but let me not make it. <laughs> but I totally get I totally get what you're saying. Not to knock anybody down, but yes. Um, like you said, people will really need to come up Absolutely. with great creative, irrespective of whether we're strong. You know, I, the only reason why I'm saying that is because from where I am coming from, I've seen a lot of people who would always use excuses. So they're just looking for one excuse. Thank God for people like you and other people who don't, you know, who always want to fight and challenge themselves. Well, that's for some other, they just use their excuses. Any, everybody, anybody, just go away. This thing is anybody that wants to the go team knows that you, you know, last one they defend. <laughs> How many times that will be close? The, the, the team will be close to submitting work, and I will say, yeah. my client deserves better than this. Take it back and redo it. Because at the end of the day, right, we must fight for that quality. We must become quality control roadblocks so that we will force ourselves to produce the best work. But the thing is that yeah. unless you hire the yeah. best people, I promise you, you cannot produce the best work. So you cannot hire a bunch of just a uh -huh. store on this street and say, exactly. oh, yeah, come and be doing outstanding work. Yeah, so you, it, it costs money to, to hire the best people. It costs uh -huh. money to keep them. Uh -huh. So what I would say admonish our members is to say, go out for the best talent, hire them yeah. and do whatever you can, okay. uh, as difficult as, as it is, to keep them and keep them motivated all the time. Yeah, yeah. And if anybody is listening, because I do have some of this discussion with some people and they always want to have a big agency. Like you're just starting. And the most important thing is to have a big agency, a fine office with a lot of people sitting. I say, go for one or two first, you know, <laughs> build your portfolio first. Well, it's crazy. Small, small, you know? is, actu small is actually beautiful. Well, I'd rather have a small agency day, so I, and I, I scale up gradually than I go... I go and hire one uh, big office that we don't have even enough yeah. time for people. I think, I think again, again, most people who come in there just think about the. You know how <laughs> it is in Nigeria. We just want the glamour and the the razzmatazz. So it's about getting the foundation and, and fundamentals yeah. right yeah. before you we jump into it. Because I mean, if you look at some of the agencies now that have been around for forty years, say EG Insights and Center Spread, they've been around for so many years. If they built on shadow Foundation, mm. they will be gone by now. So it's about just yeah. getting straight to the basics and working it up yeah. the, all the way up yeah. from there. Mm.
great. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, like I said, guys, if you have any questions, where's my my earpiece? Yeah. So if you have any questions, please put it down so that we can take them. Uh, people are shouting out to you. Shout out to Chairman Baba Eco Farms <laughs> and all that. All right. So um, okay, cool. I have one more question before I start taking um your questions. Um, Steve Baba Eco. Now, you seem to have really good plans for the industry, and Thank I you. applaud that. Um, but I have to tell you, right, I have been to mm -hmm. one of the triple AN meetings, the inner caucus meeting, no, not the yeah. regular one. I was sitting behind you that day. I think that was 27. I wasn't even supposed to be there because I was re represent. It was just for owners, agency owners. So I was representing yeah. the owner of my agency there. I was the youngest in the room. I felt out of place. <laughs> Okay, so they had a lot of beautiful ideas. Like for, for, for the first time, I was like, oh my goodness, these guys are actually very brilliant. A lot of brilliant people picking up, saying nice ideas that I felt like, oh my goodness, yeah, if these things were put in place, this industry yeah. would really, really go forward, right? After the meeting. <laughs> I did not see anything or feel anything <laughs> that happens yeah. after the meeting. I don't know if you get what I mean. So it's almost like, okay, it's all talk, 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 brilliant ideas, but no action, right? So even as you're saying all of these things, I'm pretty sure some of your predecessors have these ideas, some of these brilliant ideas, and, you know, good intentions too, but probably there were some underlying reasons that made it impossible for their plans to see the light of day. So please... How are we well, sure I, I, there's no way. The only way this to, is also to be not sure is just to for me to get to work. Maybe we can cut. It, we can start by cutting this, cutting this interview short so that I can go back to my. <laughs> <laughs> but on a serious, on a serious <laughs> thing, before before the Kuan Yun became the president of uh, Singapore, I think there have been a couple yeah. of presidents who talked and talked about how the plan of how to develop Singapore and make Singapore great. Then it took only one man to come there with his team. And they turn stuff around. Mm -hmm. It always takes one person with a big dream. And you have committed people around yourself who are committed to the same goal and vision. Mm -hmm. it, it's not so difficult. One guy will come to this country yeah. as difficult and as intractable mm -hmm. as the problem we have appears. And one person will come, will have a solid team, and will we'll just turn things around and we'll all be shocked as well. So I'm, I'm really, really quite optimistic. Mm -hmm. I'm, a very, I'm an incredible optimist. I'm, I'm so optimistic that we, we, at least for the plans that we have, we're going to put it into action because honestly, I'm not so much as a talk person. And people who have had the opportunity to work with me, they know if I have a vision, I don't yeah. mind failing. <laughs> I don't mind failing, but let, let it be seen that I gave it my all and it did not work out. Then we'll come back to the drawing table and say, okay, look, where, where did we miss the bus? I will start to plug all of the holes. So I, I'm, I'm all about just trying to do, do, do. I'm uh -huh. about go, 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 go. Even the secretary, I'm sure. They're already complaining now. Some of the processes are putting in place <laughs> to say, okay, look, we just have to go, 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 go. <laughs> so I'm really, really positive that uh, with the team that I have, yeah. uh, it's, it's going to be doable. Okay. Um, I am Signature. He's saying that your, posit your positivism oh. view and shout attitude out, shout is out to I'm Signature. So Thank you. That's a comment from uh -huh. him. And then he has a... <laughs> He has a question. He's asking what's the advantage experience. Okay, yeah, so what's the advantage you experienced in integrating well, I mean, music I've always had and that Even as a, as a young creative working in other agencies, I always knew that the future of uh, Nigerian music was very bright. I always saw it. I was always talking about it. I always said it to my, to my bosses then, look, uh -huh. the future is coming. The future of Nigeria is music. Music is going to make more money than oil. They used to look at me like I was going insane or something. But I saw it. And another thing that I saw is that I saw is a point that will be a confluence of creativity that will happen in, this, in the world, in the country, where it won't even matter. You just need to have a lot of creative quivers in your arrow, where the clients just need... What the client needs for the, a solution to this uh, marketing challenge is a piece of soundtrack. And if you're already seated in the music industry... Yeah, like everybody knows that mm. I, I don't think there's any major artist in this country mm. that I don't have relationship with. You can reach out to them and their management and say, okay, let's collaborate, let's knock this one off. The thing is that the problem of the client is solved. 
So, and sometimes it could be just activation, it could be PL. So, you just need to be able to piece it together because the leveling ground for ideas has happened. So, you can no longer say, oh, no, we just do strategy, we do creative. So, the people who are able to exploit and create all these multi pipelines for streams of ideas are the guys who are going to own the future of this business. And that's what some of us are already doing now. And I see a few agencies already doing that line as well. I shout out to them. Great. Uh, so I'm going to take some questions. Before I do that, I have this question that I've always wanted to ask you. I was, yeah. I was telling myself that any time I see you, I was going to ask you this question. How is it that <laughs> how is it that you started the industry? You know, in those days, it's not even now. In those days when you're starting this industry, I know I I, I, I know how it was then. Um everybody's yeah. being corporate. You want to talk to a client, you have to be corporate. You have to have yeah. this level of you know seriousness going on for you. And there you are with dreadlocks. Even at, at that time, I'm pretty sure people would have felt like ah. This one is quite different. How was the experience like? And why how, how <laughs> why did you choose to leave your dreadlocks in a corporate environment? Advertising is more of play now, but then it was very, very, very corporate, like I heard. So well, I mean, tell me about your experience about when you just started. The precision, right? So if you have a brand you're working on, it's not just about branding that particular product, it's about creating differentiation for that product in the marketplace. And it is that differentiation that allows this product to go into a becoming a great brand, right? So for me, the same thing. So if you apply some of the tenets of what we do for our clients to ourselves, we will be better people. But we are so we throw ourselves into the work, we don't even take moments to reflect and see, okay, what do I do with myself? So for me, I realized that I had to look different. People like the great Biodi Shubajo, uh, uh, great Mr. Biodi Shubajo, I mean, I can't call him by name, you know? <laughs> you know, always impeccably dressed, had his bow tie. He all, the man turns out like a million dollars every time yeah. I see him. His shoes yeah. sparkling clean. So, I mean, he was already different from that generation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so, I cannot be another Shubanjo. So, let me go in the direction of where yeah. Mr. Shubanjo did not go to. So, Dreadlock became another story. I remember <laughs> we just started uh, one for one. I was creative director. And uh, we got the opportunity to present to uh, IBTC Pension. Yeah. So, I, I wrote the, the first commercial IBTC Pension short. I think uh, Fabio yeah. Ugwemi shot was the director shot it for me. But uh, at the presentation, Mr. Tedo Peter side was there. And so they said, I think they had even done pictures. Yeah. They had almost concluded the process. Somebody just said, there's this new agency, just give them a chance. So we were coming there on trial. Unfortunately for our team, the team going in, I was the one in front with my dreadlocks. So as I came in, I, <laughs> I looked straight dead into Mr. <laughs> Peter side's eyes. And I saw the look there. <laughs> He wasn't, he wasn't, I could tell he wasn't impressed. He wasn't impressed at all. <laughs> who, who is this uh, company coming to talk oh. to? So I just got given the chance. But the thing is that once you wear this kind of look, <laughs> you must make sure that your outfit is also very contrasting yeah. the dreadlock so that you're always, always well turned out. But I was really looking good. I, I, I started my presentation. I, once I opened my mouth, I started to talk. Mm. He was like this before when we started when I started my presentation, he was just looking at me. Then I think I got five minutes or ten minutes into it and his his yeah. sat like this. <laughs> By the time I got into like twenty minutes in, yeah. he was leaning on his table. I said, ah, I don't catch <laughs> I don't catch my body. <laughs> but I wasn't surprised when at the end of it they gave us the, the business and we went on to shoot their first commercial for them. So it's always just about differentiating yeah. yourself. Yeah. Oh yeah. Great. Yeah, because that's one thing I noticed, I noticed about you. I said it in the video I, I released. I posted that, you know, some people just forget about branding themselves. But that's one thing you did not forget right from the beginning. Even before I Thank knew you. you were in advertising, I already knew who Steve Babayko is. Seriously. So that's something. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's something that uh, creative coming up should emulate. And what you said, too, about fashion, great. You know, before I joined the industry, I used to think advertising is all about glamour and the rest. So when I when I joined, I was like, okay, well, let's go and do, let's go there. So I was like that too. But sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when I see some other people, like when they have a graduate and then you see some, yeah, other we, people, we can I'm do like, better. Oh, we can do better. This is not looking good. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, we can. Yeah, it's not looking but good. Yeah, we need to. We need so to do, do better. So I think they are learning. If your reputation does not go before you, then yeah. you have not started this business. Before you walk into that room, mm. your reputation should go before you. I, I remember when I was okay. one for one. How many meetings did we go for? Bumi, okay, who was the leader of our team? She was the CEO of One for One. Then we'll go and start to introduce the team and say, and I, I meet our creative mm. director, Steve Baba. We we'll just look at her life. We know him. So you see, I, I tell you why. Why is that is important? If you mm. are bringing whiskey to come and perform at an event, even if whiskey had an off day. And I wasn't even on top of his game. I wasn't seeing the mm -hmm. world. He's still whiskey. People yeah. want to hear whiskey sing. But if you bring one upcoming musician with his yeah. sponsors that nobody knows who he is, mm -hmm. they, they come and what is this for <laughs> doing here? What, so you see, it's about building that reputation. And it's not going to come by doing something over the top gimmicky. It's about the knowledge, it's about the knowledge you have, the experience you have, it's all and the hurry. amount of yeah. imagination you're bringing to the table. Because the client just wants to see value at the end of the day. If you like dye dye your hair purple or dye your hair yellow, if if the uh -huh, idea uh -huh. is still not there, you're still not gonna win. <laughs> That's great. Um, I think you've already answered some of the questions because I saw somebody asking um how can young creatives survive and thrive in the industry. I think you've already answered that in a way. It's just by making sure that, like you said, they must have they should hear about you even before you step into the room. So personal branding is important. And I think you can also throw more light on what little things they can also do to differentiate themselves because a lot of them are out there and they're looking to get into agencies and they're not being employed. So well, I, what like can I, they I do to make them the more employable? I mean, go to some of the advertising <laughs> school. Triple uh, N is going to set up uh, 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 another advertising school soon. Please come and, come and learn. It's, it's about learn, learn, learn. Gather Great. School, there's school, there's academy, Great. School, there's school, there's school, Upgrade your skills because see, people think because oh I'm creative, I write music and I I do skits, therefore I'm already I'm ready made for this job. No, nothing prepares you for all of the rigors that this job demands of you. So you have to go and train for it. It's like a boxer not wanting to go to the gym and work out. Yeah. You can't you can't you have to go and work out before you, you come to drink to fight. Mm. So that's what I say. And secondly, there are see some of the things you do where you call for young creatives to send in entries. I don't know how many, how much participation you get from those young people. Let them look for such, such uh -huh. opportunities and participate. Let people, your peers, public review your work and give you feedback. That's the only way to grow. You just have to keep learning. Like, like for me, for instance, I when I when I joined uh, MCNA, I, I I told Larry at yeah. that Saturday, there was this little black cupboard in MCNA where all of the old works that had been exposed in the agency were were just dumped. For so, so many people, it was just a junkyard place. But mm. for me, it was a mm. gold mine of ideas. So I used to go there every morning. I opened that 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 cupboard and I read it. And mm. I'm like, who? I'll ask them the guys who were <laughs> old there. Who wrote this copy? They will say it. Larry Adisa. Who wrote this one? They will say it's Trinidad. Those two guys literally trained me without meeting me at all. Mm -hmm. And there was one copy I saw. One headline. I think it's for mm. an mm. Independence Day ad. And the headline was. One bright Saturday uh, in 1960. So I said, one bright Saturday in 1960. I mm. said, who wrote this headline? They said, Twinja mm. I said, this guy is a madman. So this guy actually went and took an old calendar and checked that October 1 <laughs> was a Saturday. And then, and then he wrote this line. So for me, those were the little attention. The Saturday, that yeah. My mind. And that's, those are the things I actually later started yeah. to put into my work as I was growing as a creative. Mm. Great, I'm sure they are learning. They need to do more, like you said, and be humble because one of the things I've noticed about you is that you're very humble. A lot of these people, once they know how to design like this or write copy, they are like something else. I, I experienced this when I was at, at the agency. So you need to be humble, you need to be open to ideas, you need to learn, like you need to participate. Like when I do the briefcase, like you said, I get a lot of entries, but most of them are from uh, between entry level, lev level, and mid level creatives, and some of them are actually doing well, that's, and that's a couple nice. of them are, are working in some agencies as well because they are able to like take risks. Yeah, they're able to take risks. So some some people just so, feel like oh. So what what kind of prize, what kind that. of prizes do you give them when they participate? Well. <laughs>
Like how much? Oh, sometimes I do um, cash prizes, okay. just because I just want to encourage. Yes, no, it depends now. It depends. On, like sometimes I get clients. For example, the first one I did, I got a client who was actually based in the UK, but he's a Nigerian. But he wanted to start his own company and he wanted a logo. So he said, "Oh, I don't have much money, oh, and I've been trying to get." It. I said, "Okay, fine." If you don't have much money, let's throw it out there through a briefcase. So maybe some people can be able to do it. And we did that. And he said he just had like 50K there. And then I threw it out there. And he got a lot of entries. And then he actually chose the one he liked. And he was very happy. Till today, the company is growing in the UK because it's not in Nigeria. And they are still using that logo. So somebody from here in Nigeria and uh, a freelance freelance designer who wouldn't have gotten that opportunity opportunity actually designed a logo for a company in the UK. Okay, so, so let me let me let me let me say something. Uh, on behalf of the triple so for the them. next three months, we will help you fund your briefcase uh, pitch and we'll we'll donate yeah. we'll donate hundred thousand for each month so, uh, on behalf of Triple N, we'll give you three hundred thousand to just uh, Oh my gosh uh, yeah. So is it is oh not for you great, 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 great. I'm so happy. This is the first Yeah. Ah, this is the first time I'm actually getting support for this and I'm really, really happy. I'm going to I'm really, really ex um, excitedly scream it out on my page so that people would hear and then we would definitely take um do um meaningful briefs that will benefit the country. I also shared with you before we go live. Like, so thank you very much. I'm really, I really <laughs> appreciate it. I'm already seeing the changes. Oh, great. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. I think there's a question here for you. Let me see if I can open it. Ah. Network is crazy. Okay, yes. Yeah. So how do new agencies join Triple A? And I think you have answered that. And then there's another one that says, how um, does yeah. startup so just, agency just visit, join Triple A? I think you already answered that. This is the Triple A website. Come to the second is, uh, Triple A dot org. Let me just be sure before I now okay. become the next uh, ogre at the top. is Triple A dot <laughs> Triple A dot org dot ng. <laughs> if you visit the website and then uh, go to the secretariat, is uh, in, in you know go there and then uh, meet up with the executive director, Mr. Leko Fadolapo and his team, they will definitely give you all of the facts that you need. Great. All right, good. So I think I have just one more question. Um, like I said, we are all excited about your presidency. And after your donation of 300,000 Naira, I'm even more excited because I know more good things are going to come out of it. <laughs> so a lot of people are expecting to see changes as soon as possible. So please, can you what tell us in the that first I, I 100 think days in office? What should we expect? I think this whole 100 days in office is overrated. I, 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 I think it's just a, a, a thing that our politicians <laughs> do to just sort of make noise and distract our attention. And because I really don't get along with most politicians, I'm not going to talk about 100 days in office. I want, I'm hoping that between me and my something that we will still refer to okay. in 100 years to, to come. So I'll let, I'll let us build, let posterity judge that say, and throw some tokenism on air and say, we're going to do something in 100 days. I, I just don't believe in that. It takes a bit of time to build legacy, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Okay, before my last question, I think our time is almost up. Um, Tosli is asking, does AAA and have plans to have uh, a Nigerian well, we, version we, we, of think, Lozas uh, Archive? The Lozas Archive, it's, it's about an independent project. So we, we are open to partnering with people who have such ideas. I think it's about time we have our own compilation. We shouldn't just always be looking up to, to some... Uh, to some expatriates to or some some Caucasian to to endorse what we do because you see and that's mm. part of the challenge where you say uh -huh. we're not winning an international mm -hmm. award like the can yeah how many black people are in the room when they are judging can so um if i if i come up with the concept based on an Igbo metaphor mm -hmm. uh tasteful apart like kind of uh setting how many of those white people mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. what i'm mm -hmm. saying so unless mm -hmm. we can bring diversity even at that in